Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video. Hope you find it to be a blessing. Going to take a look at some verses in the Bible as we rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to study to show ourselves approve a workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, and we'll do that. Here on the channel, first business as always, if you're hearing this and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior for their forgiveness and remission, of your sins now is the time. Christianity is really not a religion. It's rather what Jesus Christ did for us on a cross 2,000 years ago at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, where he died, he buried, and he rose from the dead. He resurrected, defeated death and hell, and he shed his blood on that cross to wash away your sins. You need to believe with your heart according to Romans 10, 9, and 10, and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is God, the Son of God, and that you are trusting on what he did on that cross, the finished work to be forgiven for all sins. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 further tells us that it's not a works, lest any man can boast. So you can't earn your way into heaven. Kind of talk about something I find about this world today that we live in. Here at the end of the church age, we know we're close to the rapture, which is our blessed hope. And we're looking forward to that. What we see in the in the common day is a lot of evil, a lot of people waxing worse and worse, and a lot of accepting of political correctness. You know, really, to be honest, I think a Christian today, whatever is the main theme of the times, whether it it be accepting of um, of others' beliefs, you know, wrong, evil things, we should go the opposite direction. But the world doesn't want to hear. What I what I call negativity. Well, the Bible is filled with what what I what I like to refer to as negative thinking. Let's take a look at Romans thirteen nine. <clears throat> For this, thou shalt shall not commit adultery. Negative. That we're just telling you what not to do. Thou shalt not kill. Negative. Thou shalt not steal. Negative. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Negative. Thou shalt not covet. Negative. And then at the end of this, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Positive. So we see, if you read this, we see this is a negative verse. The world doesn't like negative verses. What, what would they like to hear? Well, let's take a look at an example of a verse that, that a church that wants to talk about blessings and love and peace, they'll like this verse. Let's look at the positivity of this verse and how it compared to the one we just looked at. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, positive, God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, positive, that whosoever believeth in him shall not, should not perish, positive, but have eternal life, positive. But this is not the gospel. This is a synopsis of what God did for us. It doesn't tell you that he died on a cross. It doesn't tell you that the blood is what was shed for the forgiveness of your sins and that you need to believe upon that for salvation. This is the kind of verse they want to bring forward. Now, there's nothing wrong with John 3.16. If you understand your salvation is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. And let's see why they don't like to bring this verse up. Keep in memory which should preach unto you unless you believe in vain. That's a negative. And here's, we'll, we'll just focus here on verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. That's a negative, someone dying. Verse 4, and that he was buried. Negative, that's death. And that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's a positive. So you see, three-fourths of what I would consider here, first, the gospel is negative. Compared to John 3.16, where all of it is positive, 100% positivity. And that's what the world wants to hear. You know, the world does not want to hear the negative. If you just look up the word not, and you'll see there's a lot of negativity in the Bible in terms of negative thinking, which is, I think, it was a good thing. Mark 10.19, thou knowest the, the commandments. Do not commit adultery, negative. Do not kill, do not steal, do not bear fault with defraud not. So all these things are negative. And that's what the world doesn't want to hear. You know, the world wants to believe it can humanism and positivity and not turn to the Lord and not be fear the Lord and not follow the Lord's wishes and desires in the way he'd like us to walk in our lives, in our path. Look at Colossians 2.21. Touch not, taste not, handle not. Those are all negative. Look at Romans 13.13. 13. And this is an interesting verse. Let us walk honestly as, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Every, most of that is negative, except for the first part. Let us walk honestly. And how many times have we seen riots recently, even during the day? Drunkenness at night, strife and envy towards others. We see a world waxing colder and colder. We're looking for the Antichrist system. We see the leaders that are stepping down, 
paving the path and the way. Are we at the footstep of World War III? And more importantly, could this be the year of the rapture? One of the things I think I'm going to look into a little bit more is the Shemitah cycle. I'm going to find out because I believe that that's significant. Could we be up on the end of one? The Shemitah cycle, might, might it tell us that this is the year of the rapture? You know, I've always thought in my studies of the Bible that the rapture probably is going to be at an appointed time. Of course, we know it's going to be God's time, not ours. And I always thought it'd be Feast of Trumpets or, you know, Feast of Weeks. But could it be this year? I mean, I, I know that we're getting close. The world is preparing and it's waxing colder and colder and it's going to accept somebody else by his own name where it rejected Jesus Christ. So many people use the Lord's name in vain these days. It's quite common, and it's quite sad. People soon enough watch television and rot their brains than read a Bible. If you're listening to this and I'm convicting you, then this is a message from God. Put away that it's a garbage can of thoughts. The uh, television is. The Bible is what takes away all that and puts your mind and focus on the Lord and, and your prayer and your heart in the right place. So I pray for you that today that you get right with the Lord, you walk with the Lord, that you you realize that his ways are not the ways of this drunken, rioting, wantonness, strife, and envy in this world that we see. Turn away from the world and turn turns your faith and your trust towards Jesus Christ today. Accept the free gift of salvation if you're not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. God bless and have a great day.